Hello, my name is Joanne Knight. Welcome to the barn. I was quilting along on this quilt this morning, which is a really special quilt to me that I'm working on. And you can see by the red what I have already done. Now, I didn't quilt the little chicks in the border. They're embroidered on there, as you'll see in the pictures. But I ran into something and I thought, hmm, that probably is gonna happen to somebody else. So let me just do a little barn buddy on it. I'm gonna go to my setting block quilt group and this is where I am right here. This is what this block is supposed to look like and nice and pretty, well, let me take that back. It's supposed to look like that with the pearl frame on it. I have deleted the pearl frame because I'm in the middle of quilting it. But let me show you what happened to me this morning. I'm gonna move this out of the way and I'm gonna select this boundary that I have clicked with the head of the machine. And I'm gonna select my pattern, one that I put together from several different patterns. This one is a Kim Diamond pattern and the pearl frame is Joyce Lundrigan and I did the radiating lines because I liked the consistency of that look. So as I said, I clicked out this boundary right here this morning and I selected my pattern and I selected my boundary and I did pattern to boundary, which we all do. And it took a little longer than usual which should have been my first clue. And this is what it looked like. And I thought, well, that's not a good way to start the day. We like to blame the software when something happens. And when we can't figure out why it's the software, then we like to blame the designer. And I know good and well that this pattern was not designed like this by Joyce and by Kim. So I did a little more investigating. Let me get rid of that thing because it's really ugly. Remember I said that I clicked the boundary with the head of the machine. When I went up to my little drop down on pattern to boundary, I saw that I had stretched because it remembered that from the last project that I was working on that I did use pattern to boundary stretch. I'm gonna change it back to standard. I'm gonna select the boundary and I'm gonna say pattern to boundary. And now you see that the pattern goes in just as pretty as it's supposed to. The reason that this happened is because when you do pattern to boundary stretch, you only want four clicks. So in other words, if I do my boundary and I click here, 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 and then close it, okay? And that's the boundary that I have selected. And I go back to stretch. Now let's see what happens whenever I say pattern to boundary. And you can see how well that comes in. So that tells me that what happened on the first boundary is that I had too many clicks. And I knew that because I clicked it with the machine, but I didn't need pattern to boundary stretch. I needed regular pattern to boundary. And it will do the same thing on this boundary right here. Let me go down and find my frame. Where is it? There it is, right there. Select my boundary. Let me go back and make sure stretch is selected and hit pattern to boundary. And you can see that that's just really not pretty. So I thought maybe I would do this little barn buddy to show y'all that because you may run into that as well. So you wanna make sure on pattern to boundary stretch, which is a useful tool that you only have four clicks. And if you need additional clicks, you want to make sure that you have chosen pattern to boundary standard to be able to place those patterns. So I hope that helps you out a little bit and I'm going to get back to quilting. Thank you.